Did they ask you to stay? Yeah. Yeah, they asked me to stay, too. That's why I'm staying. I'm sorry. I talk a lot when I get nervous. I just take to I talk. I get quiet when I get nervous. Well, it's no wonder that we're nervous. I can't... We're auditioning for a major television show. We wouldn't be normal if we weren't nervous. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going to keep quiet. You know, you're really funny. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I was laughing when you did your audition. Oh, thank you. You have an incredible voice. I'm not just saying that because you said something nice about me. I Thanks. really mean it. Hi. Hi. They asked you all to stay? Yeah. Yeah, they asked me to stay, too. Oh, you're such a great dancer. Oh, oh thank wow. you so much. And you didn't even seem nervous at all when you were I in did? there. No. Really? Oh, I don't know. This whole audition's been so much fun. Oh, if I get the job or not. I've had a good time. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe we have a good chance, because I know that they're looking for three unknowns, and I don't know about you, but I'm completely unknown. Me too. Well, that makes three of us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. I think we got a good chance. I know. Well, I don't... It looks like maybe we're the only ones they asked to stay. Yeah, it looks like we're just... Maybe. All right. They're ready to see the three of you. Are there any others in there? Yeah, there are three more. It, it's down to six. Well, good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you. Will the first girl step forward, please? Name, please? Florence Henderson. Uh, can you tell us in ten words what you can do? The hills are alive with the sound of music. That's nine words. Oh, you're right. we Do you sing? <laughs> Uh, Miss Anderson, uh, what kind of roles have you played? Very wholesome. I played a nun in Sound of Music. I played a nurse in South Pacific. And let me see, I was the, the mother on the Brady Bunch for seven years. As a matter of fact, a lot of people just call me the girl next door. Uh, like who? My neighbors. Thank you. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. The next girl, please. Uh, would you step forward and give your name? Ellen Foley. What's yours? That's not important. I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't mean to be pushy, you know. I just thought I would be friendly. I didn't blow it, did I? Next. Uh, your name, please? Raja Gabor. Uh-huh. And what do you do? I'm Raja Gabor. That's a full-time job. What is your experience? Experience? I, I meant show business experience. Film, stage, TV, Las Vegas. And I would love to dance, dance, dance. Well, what would you say your uh, specialty was? Transylvanian goulash. <laughs> and if you're a good boy, I'll give you the recipe later. That's very interesting. Thank you. Don't you want to know more about me? I'm sorry. We don't have time, really. But you don't understand. I want to change my image. I know. You want to dance, dance, dance. Mm -mm. I want to cook, cook, cook. <laughs> Fine. Thank you very you much. You see, you started with sauerkraut, and then you put some cream in it, and then you put some um, meat in it. I assumed that you wanted me next because we seem to be going in line, and I'm the next person standing there. And uh, you're probably going to ask me my name, and it's um, Mimi Kennedy. And you're going to ask me how, what experience I've had in television, and uh, I'm going to have to say not much. Oh, what do you mean by uh, not much? Not much means nothing. Thank you, Ms. Kennedy. Thank you for, uh, for letting me be on stage with all these lovely television ladies. Thank you. Has anyone ever told you you're attractive? <laughs> Thank you. Next girl, please. Your name? I'm Debbie Allen, and I'm black. <laughs> Thank you. Could you tell us a little about your background? Well, everybody in my whole family is black. <laughs> well, any television experience? Oh, well, dear, we don't own a television. We go to the opera. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and the last girl, please. Uh, Carol Burnett. And your uh, television experience? Uh, the Carol Burnett Show. Uh, what do you do on it? I do comedy and I sing on it. Yeah, see, it's my show. Your show? Yeah, yeah, the uh, Carol Burnett Show. I'm... Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I also, I pull my ear a lot. You know, like, it's my show, this is my ear. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you very much. 
That's it. Uh, yeah, thank you. I'm so glad we had this time. The scene won't be necessary. Thank you. Okay, thank okay. you, Miss Burnett. Hey. Just to have a look. Thank all of you. And needless to say, you're all extremely talented and, and interesting and beautiful women. And we'd like to use all of you, but the show is called Three Girls Three. So. Will the first girl, the third girl, and the last girl please step forward? Uh, Ms. Henderson, Ms. Gabor, and Ms. Burnett, I'm sorry, we won't be using you. <laughs> Starring Debbie Allen, Ellen Foley, and Mimi Kennedy. With guest star Larry Kurt and special guest star Bob Hope. One singular sensation, every little step she takes. Ellen Foley! Where is she? Combination. You can't forget the rest. <laughs> For the girl is second best. Oh, now you know. One, son. Son, keep waiting one second. I'd like to hear myself sing. Yeah, I Ooh, do it. son. Take, we're not going to do it. What are you doing? Uh, excuse me, Mr. Director. Could we have a word with you? What, what's going on? Um, you see, Mr. Director, sir, we had a meeting backstage and we decided not to do the number right you now. You decided? <laughs> you decided not to do this in a rehearsal for weeks? I know, Mr. Brilliant Director, wonderful human being, but you see, the number, it's, it's not right. It's we, we feel funny coming out here and singing without even having said hello. All right, say hello. Larry and the boys take five. Oh, I knew he'd let us very okay. okay, come on, boys. Uh, 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 keep it short, keep it sweet. Keep it short. <laughs> okay, um... <clears throat> Hello, America. Uh, I'm Mimi Kennedy. How's it going? <laughs> What's your sign? <laughs> Hi, I'm Ellen Foley, and this is really a great moment for me. You know, I, uh, I always wanted to be a rock and roll star, you know, but this is television. It's really nice. It's so clean here. <laughs> If you will bear with me for just a minute, I promised a very good friend of mine that I would say hello to her on television. Okay? Hello, Debbie. Oh. <laughs> hi, uh, hi, America. I'm Debbie Allen. Yay! Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't clap for you. Uh, I'm Debbie Allen. I'm from Houston, Texas, and my daddy is a dentist. And before I left to come to Hollywood, he sat me down with tears in his eyes, and he said, Deborah Kay, no matter how big you get, don't forget your gums. <laughs> you know, America, the first thing that I did when I got this show was um, call up a girl named Sissy Palmer. Uh, Sissy Palmer is the girl who sat in back of me all through grade school and made fun of my shoulders. <laughs> so, um, when I got on the phone to her, right, I said, hello, Sissy, this is Mimi Kennedy. What's new with you? And she said, um, well, I'm married to an aluminum siding salesman, and um, I'm a secretary at an insurance company. And I said, that's nice. What's new with me? Oh, I got my own TV show. <laughs> she said, uh, that's nice. Do they have an insurance plan for big shoulders? <laughs> so, um, Sissy, if you're watching, I'm sure you are. Uh, there's something I've wanted to say to you ever since eighth grade. Eat a bug. Oh, you know, I remember this girl. I went to grade school with her. Her name was um, Elsie Carella. Elsie girls, was always girls, making fun of you. This is your director. I, I was wondering when you were going to stop saying hello and get into the song. 
What if we forget the words? And what if we trip or something? Larry, do you want to get out there and get it going? Okay. Yeah, but what if we make fools of ourselves? You're supposed to. This is television. Come on, girls, don't worry. It's show business. Give them the old razzle dazzle. Razzle dazzle them. Give them an act with lots of flash in it. And the reaction will be passionate. Give them the old hocus pocus. Feed and feather on. How can they see? With sequence in their eyes. Though you are stiffer than a girder, they'll let you get away with murder. Razzle dazzle them, and they'll never catch why. Okay? Okay. My girls are ready. Okay. Razzle dazzle them. It, is. it sure uh -huh. is, and who could hope for anything more? <laughs> I can't believe that one of the greatest stars of all time uses a telephone just like a person. Yeah, what would finger he dials? Oh, child, he's too big to dial. Probably have somebody come in and do it for him. Yeah. I'll never forget this moment. Neither will I. Thanks for the moment. Ellen, I move it, move it. I know. No, I mean, I'm doing Carson tonight. I need jokes. Ask him for some political jokes. You are great with political jokes. Yeah, do you have any political jokes? I'm great with political jokes. <laughs> Who are you? I'll tell you later. I can wait. 
Great, I can get you a job waiting on table in the commissary. <laughs> no, did you hear that line? Write it down. We'll use it later. <laughs> Mr. Hope, I'm not the kind of person who approaches stars. I mean, 15 minutes ago, I snubbed Enzo Stuarti, but you, I wouldn't snub. Make believe I'm Enzo Stuarti. <laughs> very open with you, Mr. Hope. Uh, I'm on Three Girls Three. It's a show, and it's taping right here in the studio. And uh, the producers would probably kill me if they knew I was doing this. Well, I can't do the show, but have the producers kill you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Is it the money? Uh, it's Mr. Hope, here's the, uh, here's the hunk. It's sensational. It's tailor-made for you. I mean, only you could do it. You're kidding. No. Where do I read? Where it says Lucille Ball? Yeah, we couldn't get her. <laughs> Tailored for me, huh? Yeah. I don't know why there was network resistance when your name came up. I know. It's tough being a new face. Yeah. What can I tell you? Network brass. <laughs> oh, tell them. They're across the street at Kitty Land trying to figure out the sandbox. <laughs> Are you going to do the spot or not? Here, Don, I wish I could, but I have a big bit on Zoo Parade Part 2. <laughs> I'm going to take this as a no. <laughs> Mr. Albertson, uh, the producers would probably kill me if they knew I was doing this, but... No. <laughs> well, the show seems to be going pretty good so far. Yeah, and you know, I was a little nervous at first that maybe they might not like the show. Mm -hmm. But goodness, you hear the applause we're getting? Girl, I think they do really like the show. I think so, too. Hey, maybe we're a hit. Yeah, I think we are a hit. We could be in big trouble. <laughs> trouble? <laughs> mean trouble. Aren't you afraid if this show is a success that it's going to change our lives? I hope so. How so our social life gets a little out of whack? I'll still be close to my family. Completely out of the question. Their lives are going to change, too. The press is going to be after them day and night, asking questions about us. They'll never have a moment's peace. Poor mom. Yeah, poor mom is right. They're going to be pestering her for pictures of you when you were a baby. Oh. I hope she doesn't give him that one of me in the bathtub. It was taken last year. I'll tell you another thing, Ellen. Being a big star is really going to change our love lives. Well, that I can stand. No, Ellen, no. Men are intimidated by big stars. They never ask them out. Really? Yeah. Do you know how many years it's been since Betty Davis has been on a date? <laughs> oh, well, we can look at the bright side. There is a bright side? Yeah. Maybe the audience hated us. Lance! Lance! Lance, I have a message for you this afternoon from our dear employer, the incomparable Miss Diana Ross. And I quote, ready, Icky Pussy? <laughs> dear Lance, I'm so sorry I haven't been able to talk to you, but unfortunately, I have never been in the kitchen. <laughs> Warmest personal regards, Miss Diana Ross. P.S. the last time you didn't let us in. Honey, I don't do doors. <laughs> I'm sorry we're late, baby. I had to drive Miss Streisand to the vet. Oh, yeah? What's wrong with the dog? Nothing. He's having his teeth capped. Oh. <laughs> so what is happening at Miss Reddy's? That's Ms. Reddy's, and she's terrific, thank you. You know, she's so generous. This morning, Helen went through her entire wardrobe closet and told me I could pick out anything I wanted. Stop. Ah, nice. What'd you get? Three sports jackets and a tie. <laughs> well, girls, do you know what Miss Ross told me? She told me that I am the only person in this world that she trusts with her personal secrets, girl. No. Oh, honey, it warmed my heart so. When did she tell you that? Girl, she told me that yesterday, while she was tied to the bedpost in her chicken suit. <laughs> it's two o'clock. It's two o'clock. It's two o'clock, it's two o'clock. Oh, no, I'm late for the shrink. I didn't know you needed a psychiatrist. No, I don't. Helen's so busy, I go for her. You See where else I go for her. Mm. I'm gonna be home all day interviewing maids. Oh, no, you're quitting? You're leaving the business? No, honey, somebody's got to pick up around here. <laughs> So? So? 
So, places, please. <laughs> oh, it makes oh, my day. <laughs> Opened yesterday. It's your house. You open. Oh, thank you.
depresses me. I mean, Ellen, you knew Mary Tyler Moore was going off months ago. How come you're depressed now? Because now she's really gone. And she's not coming back. Is she, Mimi? No, Ellen, she's not coming back. Oh, I had so much to learn from her. Ellen, she's not dead. She just went off television. <laughs> I can't stand it. Ellen, I mean, you've got to accept this, you know? I loved Mary Tyler Moore, too. You did? Yes, I did, but I know it's not the end of the world. But what am I supposed to do at 8 o'clock Saturday night for the rest of my life? Ellen, come on. Don't tell me you don't go out on Saturday night. You're the biggest dater I know. Yeah, 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 I go out, but not until after 8.30. I mean, do you realize we will never hear those immortal words again? Oh, Mr. Grant! You're young, Ellen. You'll get over it. I don't know. I don't know. I... Life without Mary just doesn't seem to be worth living. Ellen, okay, maybe you should just do something to get your mind off it completely, you know? I mean, you could go to a movie. Mary went to the movies. <laughs> read a book. Mary read books. <laughs> Ellen, maybe you should just go away. I mean, maybe you should, like, take a vacation. Yeah, maybe you're right. Me? Right. I'll go to Minneapolis. Maybe I'll find her hat in the street. I must have been run over by now. <laughs> And it's not coming back, either. Okay, everybody, take one.
angels. I'm not very comfortable. Me either. I don't know what you two are complaining about. I swear someone is tickling my leg. Does my hair look all right? Sure looks just like mine. I'm a beautiful blonde. And they say that blondes have more fun. Do they? Ha, ha, ha. A little. Could you two talk a little louder? I have my hand over my good ear. Okay. Sure. What else have we got to do? Well, maybe we could do something crazy, like put on clothes for a change. Oh, what's the use? We'd only have to take them off again. Maybe we could run around and solve crimes like we're supposed to do. I just don't feel like it. My neck is killing me. And our hair will get all messed up. And I thought undercover work was going to be such fun. Maybe it would if we moved. Listen, do you want to move or look good? Look good. Do you think that Chuck will call today? He's very persistent. I won't pick up if you two won't. How can any of us pick up? The phone is across the room. Yesterday, it rang 73 times. I thought it was 83. I wouldn't know. My hand is over my good ear. You know, I was thinking. I tried that once. A couple of years ago. It gave me a headache. Maybe we should leave Chuck and do what we do best. What's that? Grow hair. <laughs> Tape is rolling. Tape is rolling. You look beautiful. Okay, okay. You, you, you know your mouth now. Go sew it, please. Exit. All right. Five, four, three, two. Are you okay? I'm okay. When you just give love and never get love.
director says after that you can ask anything. Can I do it again? That anything you can't have. Uh, I said it was perfect. <laughs> oh, well, maybe to you it was perfect, but I think I can do it better. I'll oh. do it real fast. Uh, look, look, honey, uh, don't start trouble. I mean, you know, this is television. Uh, co cost is very expensive. I will pay for it. Listen, I know my parents will... I know my parents will chip in a few dollars. This is very important to them. Well, see, it's also important to get the show finished. Oliver, my whole life depends on this one song. Okay, Alan, just look at the monitor. We'll play it back for you. You guys, I don't believe it. I didn't get you flowers. You shouldn't have. We didn't. They're not from us. Bob Hope already. Read the card. You guys are gonna drop dead when you find out who these are from. Carol, Carol Burnett? Burnett? <laughs> yeah, it was obvious, wasn't it? I mean, we really were relating. There was like a special thing there between Carol and me. There really was a simpatico. I mean, it's probably like she's in my karma, you know what I mean? <laughs> so beautiful. Wait a minute, you guys didn't get any flowers, right? I can't believe it. I'm going on and on about how everybody loves me, and I mean, you didn't even get flowers. Oh, Mimi, that's okay. No. Really, I mean, there are three of us, and we can't get all, all get flowers all the time. Well, it's no big deal. I mean, it's nice of you to pretend that you don't care, but we're talking about suppressing deep psychological feelings here, and it's very dangerous. I mean, Debbie, you could trip on your dance number. Ellen, I mean, your throat could tighten up and constrict like it does sometimes when you get nervous. <laughs> Honey, what are you talking about? I'm talking about honest... I mean, I think right now is a perfect time to really open up with each other, okay? Okay. Okay, let's do it. Okay. Ellen, I like you. I like you. I really like you. I really like you. I love you, Ellen. I love you. I hate your clothes. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Debbie? Oh, can I just watch you two children? No, Debbie. Debbie, I like you. Uh-oh. -uh. Mimi, I like you. I really like you, Debbie. I really like you, Mimi. Watch I... out for the next one. Come on, I'm reaching out to Debbie now. I mean, can't you go change or something? <laughs> Debbie, I want you to be completely honest with me. If there's anything about me that you don't like, I want you to tell me now. Can I have a shot at that? <laughs> Ellen, Debbie and I are trying to recreate the same beautiful thing that we just had. <laughs> Debbie, 
I don't feel that I can ever be close to you until you're able to tell me something you don't like about me, something about... Okay. You know, I mean, it's hard to be honest like that, but I don't think these things should be bottled up. All right. You know well, what I mean? I... Even though I think that it's difficult to do it right out like this. Maybe we should just go gradually. Mm-hmm. Come on, open up. Mimi, you talk too much. <laughs> it's really beautiful that you could say that. Yeah. Well, you know, I think you were right. I do feel better already. Really? I really do. I feel terrific, too. How about you, Mimi? I feel great. I just don't want to talk about it. <laughs> What exactly do you mean by I talk too much? You do. You talk all the time, girl. I mean, you're the one that said, let's open up, let's be honest. You started this, you and your big mouth. I know it's true. Okay, but I mean, like, it was really beautiful that we did this, It though. was. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> Hi, girls. Oh, More oh hi, John. Oh, my goodness. Carol Burnett. Oh, I'm through. I am through. I love it. <laughs> and you will do something about your clothes. Well, I hate these singles bars, too, but I told myself I'd give it one more chance. If I don't find a guy tonight, I'm gonna slash either my wrists or my bangs. <laughs> either I find Mr. Wright tonight, or I'm gonna gain 200 pounds and hang out with Billy Graham. Yeah. <laughs> well, it looks like you picked a good place. I mean, so far, we're the only women here, and the men are all very well-dressed. All suits and ties, not a double knit in the crowd. <laughs> Well, you know, of course, it's not the clothes that count. It's what's underneath. Well, maybe if we're lucky. I was talking about their souls, not their underwear. <laughs> Scotch on the rocks. You got it. to singles dances, singles weekends, singles cruises. To meet anybody. Just you. Hey. hey, give me a beer. Got it. Well, what's happening with the game, Bill? Yeah, it's 21-7, 49ers. Mm -hmm. Ever go. since they got Plunkett, they changed their whole game around. <laughs> Depressed. Whatever makes you happy. <laughs> well, maybe I shouldn't have divorced Marvin. Yeah. I mean, you two were so into each other. How come you split? I took gas. Oh, wow. After four days of soul searching, I was finally able to come out and admit publicly what was going wrong with my marriage. What was it? Marvin stinks. <laughs> Hi. What's happening with the game? Yeah, it's 21 7 49 or All right. Okay. <clears throat> Some men are afraid of intelligent women. Oh, you know how men are during the football season. I mean, have you ever heard of an orgy being scheduled on a Sunday afternoon? <laughs> I've never been invited to an orgy. You're not missing much. It's a drag writing all those thank you notes. <laughs> I read in Cosmo that men who like contact sports are very sexy. And Cosmo thinks men who like anything are sexy. <laughs> hey, listen, you know that quiz that they had called How Romantic Are You? Yeah. Well, I took it for Marvin. How'd he score? 
Never. I read in an article that men do not approach women who stick together. Sunday, a superb new telling of the story of Christ, Jesus of Nazareth, starring Robert Powell as Jesus Christ, with an all-star cast including Ernest Borgnine, James Earl Jones, James Mason, Christopher Plummer, and Olivia Hussey. Jesus of Nazareth, Sunday at 8, 7 central time on NBC. Stay tuned now for Kingston Confidential, next. Also appearing tonight, Fritzy Burr and Oliver Clark. when you're hosting your own show. Oh, come on. Can't we just finish the song and then we promise we'll go? Girls, girls, how many times can you say, can we get, 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 Yes. We would like like Fritzy, who is our Fritzie. um our wardrobe Thank you, mistress. Girls. And I love, love you too, but I got a bus to catch. And we love you. All right. very much. My car's been laid up for three days. Heaven only knows what they're gonna charge me. Can't we keep them dressed? We can't keep them. Well, anyway, if there's any girls out there who want to go into show business. I'd just like to take this moment to say that it's really, it's a warm and wonderful experience. The most wonderful experience a girl could ever know. I mean, the feeling of love all around here was, was everywhere. It was wonderful. Shut up. Kill the lights. And uh, I want to thank the wonderful person who gave us this wonderful life. Yeah. Yes. Hey, this is security. Who's out there? Everybody's gone home. Oh. Gee, I guess... I guess it really is over, huh? But what are we supposed to do now? What do you think Carol Burnett does when her show's over? <laughs> well, she probably has a party with all her Hollywood friends. Yeah. Do you have any Hollywood friends? Yeah, two. Three Girls Three will be returning to NBC later on this year. Watch for it.